And now, the nomad go in shiva galera kfehver oroid on octoron is more more on honor agus on privilege domsa octoron the heron me hold the ohigin a coronal day octoron culture are a corkrin kennedy sequini core er and get all she sinta can rode go will ocean lord mock a post pipe and Shan Steel at a squinch in our special to remain. It's more in Deshavam, near Wonkin and spread into Pobble and Hotchisha, and Pobble at Lanaha show a grillor, and Yaksha Strad while in Sprout, a show echo, Akama, Shanskun, and Amphitheatre Lusha, Glock Yordan, Oskal, Kahifigo. May I say, first of all, Minister, the, and uh, dear friends, uh, what a great pleasure it is. I've been thinking about it is that to, to have the benefit of giving an open air speech again. Uh, I gave many of them in different circumstances with different receptions uh, over several decades. And, and it, 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 when I think back on it, it was a great time. Uh, I have very, very large crowds, not only in Ireland, but it, when I look out here and actually see uh, all the generations represented, and particularly all the young people. And the fact that we're doing it in a setting that is out in the open air, in an eco-village, is absolutely would make anyone's heart lift. And also the children who are playing behind us. And I couldn't help noticing that there's a young fellow with red hair who's a very talented soccer player in the making, <laughs> but, and we're at a very low ebb in Galway United at the moment. But, uh, but, it also, uh, when I got the invitation to come here, uh, and earlier I was in, in bar uh, planting trees, uh, it's the eve of Earth Day, and it's the first anniversary of the Paris Agreement. And it's one of the things uh, that strikes one, and particularly at my stage of life, is that very often you can look back, back at whole reams of words that really are quite distracting unless they are turned into reality. But it is here uh, in this eco-village that so much is being turned into practical achievements and in difficult circumstances. Because every now and again the thought occurs to me is that whatever happened to the cooperative movement and uh, I look back sometimes at the history of the cooperative movement in Ireland, and I see when it was flourishing for a, a very great period of time. And if one wants to, reference is made to commemorations already. Uh, somebody will have to face the reality of thinking what happened during our war of independence and what happened during our terrible civil war. And one of the terrible things in the civil war was the burning of the house of Horace Plunkett. And I often think of all of the activities of people like that who are trying to encourage cooperation. So while here in the open air, uh, where our voices can carry right up to the top, and there is, but it is important for us to think again about what really can be achieved by doing what was started here eight years ago by those people who, who, who took uh, the first house within a certain kind of set of values. And very often some of us who, who had backgrounds after a certain kind of journey through academic life and the rest of it, there's nothing academic at all about this. It is our lives are short. I refer to it in some of my speeches, is that we are in the end migrants in time. And what do we want to do with our lives? We have in the course of getting to a point of freedom, have to reject not just imperialisms and restrictions, uh, but all sorts of other blockages in our line. And one of the great blockages we have at the present time is in relation to not being able to, 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 to understand and take apart language that is being fired at us. Uh, I s went to, to university at the age of 21. It was part of the way in which you wanted to escape from your circumstances to get a kind of education. Then there was the glamour of giving lectures, and then there was a called beautiful relationship with students. 
But in the end, in trying how to live, at the present time, in my view, we have placed serious restrictions on our thinking. We've been stuck within a model of connection, as has been as I was introduced, of connection between nature or ecology and ethics and economy. Uh, that is, in fact, not just restricting us, but is, in fact, killing people all over the world. We might be on the verge, yet again, of another terrible, destructive set of war economies. When you think of the alternative out here, people in the open air, in the public space, listening to beautiful music and beautiful words and to poems and people making music and children playing and we living our lives and investing the time given to us with being able to take the cares of each other into each other. That is what life uh, is about. I've described it recently as saying, instead of all this notion when I meet heads of state and others, you must tell them about all that Ireland has achieved or whatever. We must get to a point where we're able to exchange stories of each other's vulnerabilities and how we responded to them and how much we were to be able to take into ourselves. And I often think then of the way that that works in amphitheatres. Uh, I remember visiting the amphitheatre in Epidaurus, in wonderful and much mutilated and much beaten Greece. One of the most terrible things about my time as President of Ireland was to hear people speaking dismissively of a great people who gave us some of the finest concepts by which we might live, referring to saying things maybe like that we could be as bad as the Greeks. The Greeks, I remember standing in Epidaurus and thinking about the origin of drama and theatre and how the man came home from the war and he stood on a stone and he stuck them to the ground as he was telling them about his experiences of war. And then that became the monologue and then it became the, went on through the chorus and it gave us tragedy, and it gave us all the great things in literature. And Irish people did the same thing, many of them through hedges and in different circumstances. And that is what, in fact, the best of Ireland is about. And Thomas McDonagh, I'm so honoured to hear of those members of his family speaking about it, understood that, that you must be able to have a kind of integrity of imagination, such as will allow everything in, as the Irish poets did, without censorship and without restriction. Speaking of all the five senses and all of the passions of the heart and the capacities of the human body. So the question then for the concept of people living together. Twenty years ago, a group of people came together in the Central Hotel in Dublin itself a quite revolutionary context, I must say, home to many dissident attempts to share their dreams of what might be, as I have been describing it, a more ethical and sustainable life. Lived in a community which isn't difficult, which isn't easy, and can have difficulties living under the gaze of the other. And it is a powerful, emancipating, ethical moment when you're able to live your life taking the vulnerabilities of the other and knowing that yours are reciprocated and to be able to live in the gaze of the other. And it went beyond that, just simply doing things that are material. It, as I said, is out of a, a, a certain sense of a shared value system and of a connection not only with others, but also with the rhythm and the beauties of what surrounds you. That is the space. The ecos, the whole question then of what you might want to do, the ethical impulse, and then of course what is shared in terms of practically existing in an economic sense. But it is very interesting to think about how people don't take words apart. People simply said it is all about individualism now. Individualism has to be understood as the loss of the personal the loss of personal capacity because of the inability to live together. In the same way as the feminist movement over decades and all sorts is not simply about what is directed against women, 
but it is about what was lost in terms of human life by the fact that women weren't allowed to achieve and deliver their full potential. Everybody loses when you have these kind of discriminations. Equally, I think what I have here, when one comes out in the open, in the air, and hoping about the weather, you're also left as well about the importance of symmetries, of things that come together. When I was very, very, when I was in my 30s, in, in, in going into the Senate for the first time, I remember giving a pretentious speech on the threat to the world's marvellous symmetry on some of these, on these themes. But I still think it was right. We have, in fact, so often, in the linear version of economic progress, he described it as a struggle against nature. And I often quote Francis Bacon, who has all the prejudices in a single paragraph. I lead to you nature and her children in bondage for your use to gouge out her secrets. And that which stands there at the beginning of the colonizing period of all of the imperialisms is a great disjuncture, an act of violence against what is natural. So therefore the debate which we may not be have now having, but which we must have, what is natural in the human condition and its relationship with nature? Is it natural to be acquisitive or is it natural to share? Is it, did somebody suggest, for example, that it, the human being is at her or his best when ins insatiability has been unleashed? When you said nothing is enough, do you own the whole world yet? In County Clare they would say he wants to put his arms around the whole world. But I remember it. What, when do you make the transition from sufficiency, from giving yourself the time to listen to music, to hear children, to hear old people, to make stories, to talk? When do you give it all up to say, I want more and more and more? And then to have your conversations reduced to, do you hear what so-and-so owns? And he owns this as well. Well, when they all own the world, how much has been lost? But these are basic issues. What is it that we want at the heart of our value system? Is it to meet sufficiency, not just for ourselves, but for the whole world, and to do so in balance? Or is it to be in regarding as the celebrities or gods of our time? those who have insatiable and greedy instincts. I think this disconnect is very, very important. And it is wonderful that we are able, that I am able now, to speak as president as well, of this lost symmetry and the price that we are paying for it. It isn't when we criticise the existing disconnect between ecology, economy and society. It isn't that we are saying we wish we had it all ourselves. No. It is just that it is so destructive, destructive of the person. It produces a lesser person. It produces a damaged community. And it produces a damaged world. And it stands as obstacle to forms of cooperation in practically every aspect of life. And therefore, when people criticise extreme individualism then, it's important to say we are not hurling insults at each other. We are claiming the right to take language and ask what it means. If the destruction of the personal is what we mean, let's call it that. But then if we are to live ethically together, I remember going to Limerick University when Father was there, speaking to people who are interested in the concept of utopia. And utopia is a damaged word. It simply meant a better place, a new place a different place. And this is a question I think now I love to ask in the open air. How free are we now to actually think about a different form of economics or politics or society? How, how, how much more free are we than those who went before us? I think of Thomas McDonough as a teacher and Thomas McDonough as somebody who had a version of Republic that was about freedom and that included a commitment to language, and that made poems as well as teaching and all of this. And is it, when you think of his life, there are now many, many more, thousands, tens of thousands of people 
who would say, listening to what I have just been saying now, but sure, that's what he's always said. And anyway, we couldn't possibly change. These are people who have surrendered. They've surrendered to mediocrity and they've surrendered to failure. And I think that what I say to them, not in any reproach, you must not visit your despair on a new generation. You must allow people, young people, old people, middle-aged people, to have a different view and to be able to say, we can remake the world. We can live together differently. And this is what has happened here over the last eight years. Three houses, now 55, and more to come. Because people are saying, we're not just recalling Earth Day or Paris in 2015. We're actually putting it into practice. Agus gwym ngoc rog y span ac dyn y ddyn i ato jyn yw sin. A to i car gnifri ddiarafaca un oet, un oet ffocli ffolioffa. And if we are to aspire to live ethically together, we do need these visions put into practice. Ones that are democratic and enriching and respectful of our fragile, pal pl our fragile planet. And the, the mission, not just of this village, because it doesn't stand alone, but its wonderful relationship with its surrounding communities, which is important. And then, too, there is the mission of the Global Eco-Village eco eco Network. Very simple. A world of empowered people and communities designing pathways to a sustainable future while building bridges of hope and international solidarity. These are inspiring words translated into new ways of living here in Clock Jordan, seeking a holistic, integrated, value-led concept, as I have been describing it, about how we might live together and with joy, being able not only continually recoiling from one level of anxieties or another, but living with joy. And as you've heard Pather describe it, yes, it is possible, as Fedor Yenov, you can have a village like this, aspiring and delivering and enabled to live a low-carbon lifestyle. And then all the other sides of it, there is nothing odd about any of this, because it's using science as it should be used, not science for war or science for ecological destruction or science delivered into technology for mindless consumption, but science used to live better in a symmetrical way with renewable energy heating, energy efficient homes, biodiversity, local produce, the freedom of children to play, encounter nature, green enterprise center, solar and wood park community heating, acres devoted to allotments, farming, thousands of native trees. All of this is an agenda about life and hope on our planet. And the village stands as an impressive and encouraging testimony to Gokra this Svedriyan of all that can be achieved. And I think what is so important is that this has all been merged and bonded with the existing town. Rural Ireland is not only about which parts of an economy can be distributed to it. It is about families, businesses, it's about people baking bread, it is about people designing new things in science, making inventions, and doing so near that which they call a sense of place. That is important. So today is another important landmark, out in the open, as part of the claiming back of the commons, which is part of humanity, doing something in the open, the formal opening of the new amphitheatre in Clark Jordan. And I hope, as those artists who have come before me have said, and they were so wonderful, people will often come here, like that person who came back from the war to Athens and spoke about all that he had seen and heard, and that people will talk about what they've learned and what they've taken from people who taught them music and all of that they've been imagined, and they'll offer it up the hill in the amphitheatre to anybody who wants to listen. And yes, yes, that is what Thomas McDonough would have wanted. And that is what real republicanism is about. And that is about the fullness of life. I think it was this, this original project 
and I pay so tribute to those of it assisted in it coming into being, was originally conceived as a 1916 centenary project, inspired by the great native that is Thomas McDonough, and I think its construction is a work of vision, of reimagining its design, itself, its use, the repurposing of it, using local materials, as I've heard, local labour, people bringing it into existence for the day it was needed. All these cultural spaces are important. We are not called onto this planet to use all of our efforts to fit into something that we are told we might never understand. There is nothing that cannot be understood. And one of the great challenges, part altogether from when I finish on this, what is needed now more than else, is this confidence and offering people hope and as saying as often as we can in as many places as we can. There is no aspect of our modern world that should not be capable of being described and understood by every citizen. And it is only in the same way when in fact actually literacy made possible democratic consultation. The new literacy will be about economics and fiscal matters, but it will be about principally the connection between forms of economy, forms of society, and forms of living together. And all of this is capable of being described. And that thinking must break out from the academy. And it must subvert kinds of thinking that suggests there is only one way, and we all have to adjust ourselves to it. We are not called to do that. So here in Clark Jordan, as I launch, formally open this amphitheatre, I think I want to say, may its example flow out. May people discover the courage and the joy of being able to live together and to be able to do so. It's been... <laughs> there the, the technology has punished me. <laughs> there we are now. It's... it's now that's the good test of an amphitheatre. Is min lam krik ut kriak nu, la fakal vishitov shud ilye gatai gur ko krusan, kan an pavlin sparajak sever den lahaksha a hurter and seh. Agas aka hor en edini shin iliak, a honiga gaurs and hirit shin valley, kan an spas tavak ta falamax korainch alianta, sho hurt kan krike, agas kalurimid in shanyu. May I conclude by thanking all those who have worked so hard to create this inspiring, rich and democratic community and all those who've helped in so many ways to bring to fruition this important space of artistic learning and sharing that we celebrate here today and that will be celebrated by all those who share and come after the vision of Thomas McDonough of Clark Jordan. Thank you.